Well, 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 here we are now. We'll talk about velocity stacks and delve deeper into the studies of Gordon P. Blair and talk about our design solutions or at least attempts in improving it and also the RAM air system that we're going for because of the data that we've data logged previously. We'll also talk about famous, well-known race cars, examples, and of course, Kong 2, Drag Cartel, and even Bisimoto. So you know, you like this. velocity stacks or locally they call it ram air the purpose of, vel of a velocity stack is for the air intake to ingest without any losses or pressure loss when it comes to that or restrictions but that is also only on stagnant air or ambient air meaning on an enclosed area or an air box or let's say on a flow bench you know so not when it's disruptive or forward facing that is why on this drawing that we did you can see air is being pulled from every direction or from everywhere right even below the horizontal plane of the velocity stack this is when you know if you kind of like roll back or roll down the lip of the velocity stack it might pull more air from here and that is why you see manifolds like Skunk 2 Ultra Street and Ultra Race manifolds have the velocity stack or the opening slightly lifted from its plenum floor. Even the high power making ITB named Kinsler's has that on the velocity stack. They even curve it downward for even more possible airflow induction. Now going back to the Gordon P. Blair studies, you can see here the first one on top is simple, simple radius and then it's the aerofoil profile and elliptical profile. The simple radius is the most common velocity stack that we get here locally, right? And the aerofoil profile is actually a lot better than the simple radius. When you think about it, uh, the aerofoil profile is the most common velocity stack that we see here that's used especially on the 4 inch intake pipes. But the elliptical profile is by far the best performing of all three. And we're working on something like that and we will show you this one now. The carbon fiber velocity stack is the 4 incher and the blue one is the common 3 inch velocity stack. So what we did was mold off or take the molds off the 4 inch carbon fiber velocity stack and swerve it to a 3 incher. Here we are now, black or white, just like Michael Jackson says. And here the closer, you can see it's elliptical, it curves even better. And here's a close-up, you see? Now this is gonna work really, really good for a three inch intake pipe. Don't worry, we're working on another one that's gonna be good for a four inch, but it's still not available just yet because we need it a little bit bigger in the opening, at least 10 inches. To further talk about how air is pulled from the velocity stack, look at this CFD. You can see the floor of the lip or the, of the plenum, that is where also the air is being pulled, right? This is why Skunk 2 raises the velocity stack from the floor. This increases the efficiency of the velocity stack or the runner entry because you get to pull air for from every single available area within the plenum, including below the opening. 
Now going back to Gordon P. Blair's study, this is the simple radius entry. As you can see, it's Mach 0.225. And on his elliptical radius profile, look, it's Mach 0.237. So it's definitely more or faster, right? For the same amount of losses. So this, as we know, is more efficient. That is why we did this. So for the three inches on ambient air or enclosed surfaces like the dyno, this is going to be way efficient. So going back to this diagram, as you can see, it pulls it from all around it, right? But the problem with that is we, if you put this flush on, a, on the bumper or on the front of the car, this is what happens. Look. As you can see, just a lim limited of air goes into the velocity stack. And some that know or understand aerodynamics will know that air, even before it reaches near the car, it swerves away, right? So this is what happens. So we did this. Push the velocity stack a little bit forward. This way it gets free air, right? And initially, this was good because we actually data logged it and saw this. But then you can see here at the end of first gear, it's negative one PSI on the map sensor. That's how inefficient the velocity stack is. But then even at the near the end of fourth gear, over 100 miles per hour is still negative 0.1 PSI. So when you think about it, it's still insufficient or it's still gasping for air, right? Hmm. After giving it some thought, because we actually ran 12.1 on that car, um, I just wanted to see why we're not getting at least positive or, you know, a little bit of PSI or air because of the ram air because I know that anytime you go over a hundred miles per hour you're supposed to get at least positive at least 0 0.01 or 0.5 PSI but then I realized this remember this drawing that I made it pulls air from everywhere you know from the perimeter even from below its opening or horizon right now this is what happens when it's forward facing. Look, even the air around it is trying to go on its sides or around or from its perimeter because it's forward facing. It's not meant to be forcing air, rather efficiently ingest air, you know, from like from a vacuum standpoint or from ambient air. This is why it works really really good on the dyno. So it got me wondering, you know, like there must be an ideal design or approach for a forward facing intake, you know, something that would ingest more air, be very efficient and give us better performance. So, you know, it got me thinking and then I realized why stick to cars? There are planes and other things that relate to aerodynamics, right? But before anything, uh, let me talk about Mike Arnold. He's a cinematographer, but an airplane hobbyist. And look, this is Mike Arnold's AR5, his masterpiece. It actually held the record aerodynamically with the least drag coefficient. About three out of five aerodynamicists couldn't believe it. But when you think about it, he just knew aerodynamics sensibly but of course, he had the innovation that has probably no limits, you know? And this is not to say that aerodynamicists or engineers don't know much. No, it's not that. It's do not limit yourself because you can actually study it on your own. But innovation, that is the limit that would create good or excellent or even amazing products. So think about it. This now lets me talk about Formula One. Adrian Newey. Just because each team has a lot of engineers, it doesn't mean everyone's gonna be fast. Like, look at this. This is Adrian Newey's design for March Layton House. You know, it's March 881. He worked for March Layton House in the late 80s until 1990. 
and from 1990 all the way to 1997 he was designing and working for Williams Formula One he designed Damon Hill's championship winning Formula One and then from 1997 to 2005 he was over at McLaren you know taking care of Kimi's car yeah and from 2005 until present, he is the chief designer and prince and engineer of Red Bull Racing. So you know, he's quite innovative in his own way. You know, he thinks really outside the box. And this, what I'm talking about here now is that everyone can learn aerodynamics. Everyone can learn airflow. But innovation, it's a limit or it changes between one or the other so you know think about it now going back to forward facing intake and all the troubles that we see i realized look the f86 saber that's a forward facing intake right look it actually is curved really well and quite efficient here's another one look the mig 15 and you can see the air inlet of the front and it's forward facing it's not really a velocity stack right and you can see here they probably know the design principles and how it's going to be efficient aerodynamically and having a talk with bc and as as i've been friends with him for over 15 years we talk about efficiency where it comes to fuel or performance or even power you know and what is this that's not a velocity stack oh this is crazy good this dude is very innovative right now here's another one skunk 2's better record breaker as i talked to dave sue the owner back when he was still active in facebook he told me they actually got positive one psi or a little bit more but they wanted more because david told me that they know of a, of a certain race car or racer that actually got 2.8 psi at the top end think about that for a minute that's 2.8 psi of boost when you're running all motor that's crazy right especially when you can tune it to go even faster and of course shout out to dr charles for just simply being awesome what's up next is jeremy lukowski's race car the owner of drag cartel industries look at that that is not a velocity stack right guys interesting huh all right so we've come up with this design because it this would let us get more air or volume right so to see or understand the principles of a velocity stack here it is now think of this as columns of air stacking behind one another you know each line is a column but when you know when you think about it they're all after the other you know they're just pushing each other inward right so there you go and you can see it'll just keep filling the intake pipe better this way you get the plenum really really good filled up right now here's the design that we've come up with we increase the volume of the entry but before tapering it down will it go inside for the same volume this way it stacks air even stronger or even better right i mean hopefully you can visualize it right it's and it should work really good and we're gonna data log this and let you guys know what is up and if it's still lacking we can actually adjust the sizes for however we want it and that will be the next update here's the 6.5 by 10.5 on the left and the 7.5 by 10.5 on the right here you can see it's looking really really good this is the 10 7.5 by 10.5 it's four inch inside and you can see we molded a small velocity stack inside this definitely won't work for the dyno but on track it might be crazy crazy good you can run this through the headlight on the right side like a ram air as usual you know it will still be functioning really really good or 
run it on the bumper grill just like skunk 2 and drag cartel and that is what we plan to do with it this way people would think you're running a k-series uh huh or actually it's good for a k-series also now going back to the velocity stack as you remember this one that we drew and gordon p blair's study and diagram we know which one works but look at this diagram number six seven eight nine is getting good number 10 is only better by with number six but look at those diagrams but look look at number 11 it's positive 5.8 percent for a ram pipe or a velocity stack and you can see how it tapers or it curves outward this way it lets you pull in air even from the sides or below the horizontal plane this is what's gonna be working really really good on the dyno so this is what we did now remember this velocity stack which is inspired by gordon p blair's elliptical profile right He's a good look for it, you know? Here you go. And because of this diagram here, we did this. Look, we added a lip over outside the velocity stack to add curve. This way, this is gonna be pulling air even from the perimeter and almost below the horizontal plane, right? And we added tape so that you can visually see it better. You know, and you can see the curve is really good and it's elliptical, right? And this is going to be really, really good for the dyno, like in this drawing that we did, right? So, hey, going to be good. And this is not to say that those who run a velocity stack on track is not correct or doing it wrong. No, of course, it still is better than just a bare pipe. You know, it's an improvement, right? And the thing here is that once we get an improvement, do you stop there or you try to try to get some more improvements to beat your previous best? Because for us here, that is what we do. We innovate, we try to improve and beat the previous best that we did, you know? And to us, that is the essence of research and development. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. If it don't exist, innovate.